We've had Coco on the show, and now we finally have Marco. What's up? Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. All right, you guys, welcome on in to The Point with Kristen Bird. I love it when that happens, when <laughs> my guests go, yeah, we're starting the show. You let me tell you, Marco, you are not the only one who has done that. So you are in good company, all right? All right, you guys, I have season eight contestant and all-star from So You Think You Can Dance, Marco Jamar. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited you're here. We've had like a whole pre-show going on. I feel like we've talked about a ton of things I know. already. I know. <laughs> and now we have another hour together, so. Uh, we're not done yet? <laughs> no, we're not done yet. No, we walked into the studio together and we just started yammering. And I made him coffee. Yep. And Still you guys, alive. I don't drink coffee and I don't have a coffee maker. I have a Keurig. So I just put in the little pods, and so I, this is like the first cup of coffee I've ever made someone. I know, that sounds ridiculous. Still alive. And still you're alive. still alive. I was like, Marco, I hope I don't kill you, and if I do, I'll take you to Starbucks after. <laughs> I know, if he goes out in the middle of the show, you all know why. Um, one quick thing, don't forget to stick around, because I do have the winner of the Pro Dance Camp giveaway. So stick around to find out who won that fantastic prize. But Marco, we've got so much to talk about because I was realizing when I was doing um, a lot of research on you, I don't know a lot about you. Isn't like, that interesting? <laughs> most people don't. I like to like stay in the shadows. I do my own thing. Most people don't know um, much about me. I don't know. I'm just. Pretty, pretty I thought that was really private. fascinating because I feel like so many of the other all stars. I'm like, well, I know this, and I know they're from here, and this is the studio they studied at. And then I was like looking through all my notes, and I'm like. I got nothing on Marco. I got a few things. You know, I went back yeah. and watched a lot from season eight, um, but didn't even realize you were from Guam. How did I miss that? Well, at least we were here now. We can uh, hash out some things that uh, you don't know and talk about things that you do know, and then here it goes. I know, I know. So how how many years did you spend in Guam before you moved um, over here stateside? So um, I grew up in Guam. I was, I've been there. Um, I was there when I was... 10 and then I moved to LA when I was 19. Okay. Um, that was in 2008. So were you studying dance when you were in Guam or were you just someone that was interested in dance? Because I find a lot of you, all, you all stars are kind of fascinating to me mm -hmm. because I just know the path of like you start dance at three and then you just keep on doing it. And a lot of you guys who are really, really good and on So You Think You Can Dance mm -hmm. are like, I picked it up at 11 or like I was 19. And where were you <laughs> on the, this whole like dance chain? So uh, I started dancing at a dance studio, um, actually training at age 10. Mm -hmm. um, but prior to that, um, I actually started dancing uh, street in, 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 in on just part of where I'm from. Um, dancing with my cousin, he had like a dance crew, so I did a lot of hip hop. That's where I learned a lot of my tricks when I started out. Um, that was about around age seven. Mm -hmm. um, I did a talent show, um, dance talent show in my middle school at the time when I was 10. Um, and one of the judges was my, who later became my dance teacher. Uh, he was judging and then he, was, he, he had just graduated and flew back to Guam from Long Beach. Um, he graduated Cal State Long Beach with a mm -hmm. degree in, in, in dance. Um, spoke to me afterwards and was like, hey, I'm opening up my new dance studio. Um, would you want to be one of my first students? I was like, sure. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. There's an interesting dance scene in Long Beach, too. I don't know if people realize it here in California. Um, a lot of like the original like masters are there, and I know some of the kids from the lab will go mm -hmm. and take extra lessons from some of them, which I think is amazing. So you're, you're learning from probably someone that was extremely well-trained and everything. Yeah, and I know Cal State Long Beach had a, a pretty good, they have a really good dance program. I've been in their facility when I was... Uh, 13. I just kind of roamed around with my dance teacher when he, he when he took him took me out here to LA for the first time. Um, great facility. That's incredible. Yeah. Did it kind of, when he took you here to California? Did it give you some ideas of like I think I want to move here. That's I want to pursue. That was actually the first time that I realized that I'm LA is where I meant where I where I need to be where I'm meant to be. Um, after being on that trip, I was like, yeah, I'm going moving to LA. I'm going to dance in LA. Wow, what's the name of your dance teacher, just so we know? Uh, Caesar. Caesar, so yeah. this this is like the guy that kind of inspired you and inspired your career too. Yeah, pretty much. He he started my training um, and he's the one that exposed me to what the dance world is out here. Um, I was only here for two weeks and he literally, I remember when the, the old millennium was still around the dome, mm -hmm. he literally dropped me off in the morning and then left me there the whole day by myself. 
<laughs> was your mother okay with you like coming to California and just being like dropped off at a dance studio? Yeah, I'm pretty um, independent. I've always been that mm -hmm. way. Um, I used to, my mom doesn't ever really drop me to the dance studio when I was in Guam. I just would walk to the studio. Mm -hmm. I would ride with friends. I've, I've always done my own thing that way. So when I flew to uh, um, California, Los Angeles for the first time, I um, had no idea what was happening. I've never seen freeways. For, I saw a freeway for the first time when I, when I got out here. Um, anyway, so my dance teacher like took me to Millennium, dropped me off, and left me there. And you just spent the whole day training? Yeah, by myself. 13-year-old kid. I didn't know. I was, I was so scared. So scared. So when he drops you off at Millennium for the whole day, are you taking hip-hop classes? Are you taking also a ballet class, yep. a jazz class, everything? Mm -hmm. So is this around the time when you you had you were exposed to like ballet and jazz or had you been had a little bit of exposure when he opened the dance studio in Guam I got some exposure when he opened a dance studio in Guam but um Guam at the time didn't have a lot of um we 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 don't have a lot of good training at the time yet um mm -hmm. my dance studio was that I when I was when I started it was fairly brand new um we didn't really have a strong ballet program nor do we in t to this day at one point when I was still there, we had one teacher that was constantly there teaching ballet. Um, but I, he, my dancer team himself was more of jazz trained. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that he always told us is that like, he's not the most technical dancer. He's not the tallest dancer. He's, his physique is not the ideal dance physique, but he loves to perform. He's a performer. And to this day, I can still, I can still imagine him in my head, how he would just dance his little mannerisms and how he performs. Um, and I think, because of that, he he instilled performance in us, and that's what I like to do. I like to always perform. I may not be um, the greatest turner or the jumper, or I don't have a leg or anything like that, or the technique, but I will perform. Well, and I, I like I appreciate that because we have all seen, and we we see this sometimes even on the So You Think You Can Dance auditions. You watch this most gorgeous technical lines, but then there's no soul, and mm -hmm. you're thinking. If they only dance with some heart, mm -hmm. we don't necessarily care that the leg wasn't perfect or that the turns weren't perfect. Because if you're dancing from your heart and you just see that joy, it adds something special. Exactly. And you gotta and especially with so you think you dance, um, you have to connect. You have to connect to your audience. Um, the audience that are beyond the T V screen, the people that can't necessarily be there and feel the the pre your presence live in the studio, you have to try and connect to them and what um, our producer would always tell us, every smile is a vote, every smile is a vote. So that's what you gotta do, you gotta perform, you gotta connect. And a lot of people that don't know um, the value of that, don't do well in the show because at the end of the day, it's a TV show, right? <laughs> it certainly is. And you know, it, it's one of those things too, if you understand, mm -hmm. like for me, when Koine came on mm -hmm. uh, last season, I was like, Complete, I didn't know much about her. You know, I had some history with some of the other contestants that were on the show. And when I saw her, I was like, oh my God, that girl's a star. She just like leaps off the TV screen mm -hmm. um, and right away you connect with her. And you're like, I just like her. I, I don't know anything about her. I like her. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly how I felt um, in the audition process when we were picking our contestants. And she just, she, she pops out of in the crowd, you know, um, because of her performance. That's how she is. She just yeah, she's a joy. Out. Yeah. Did you know of her before? Because sometimes some no. people you, nothing. Okay. Zero. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I, I want to get back to you too. Is your studio still in existence in Guam? Yes. Caesar. So he's still teaching out there. Yes. Okay. I love that. Um, and I forgot about this story because I, when I was doing all my research for you on season eight, going back to the archives, really, you were shot you were yes. shot at gunpoint right yes here in los angeles it was in los angeles okay yes. so you move here at 19. Mm -hmm. um and it was uh it, it was a robbery and i i was in gunpoint and i decided to fight back and police will tell you don't fight back <laughs> some people's instincts so you never know what yeah. you're going to do though because when you're in that moment you don't know if you're going to panic you don't know if exactly. you're going to run away you fought back yeah so um I, always, I had this weird thing that I always wondered, I wonder what would happen if I was on gunpoint, if I'm ever facing a situation like like that, I wonder what would I do. Like, oddly enough, I always wondered that ever since I was a kid. Um, I would have preferred to find out in other ways. Sure. <laughs> or maybe not find out at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I did. So when I was in the ambulance uh, heading to the hospital after that incident, um, I remember the paramedic telling me, like, uh, there are three types of people in this world, like three Fs. One's, one that freezes, ones that um, flees and ones that fights. He said, good for you. 
I love that. Yeah. That's so, you know, and that can be used in any situation yeah. too. Like not just in a, that's a violent crime, but what are you going to do in the moment when you need to fight back for something on the job or something like exactly. that? Exactly. And, in, 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 yeah, it's not only with, with violence, but in, in our life, we we go through ups and downs all the time. And are you the type that would just freeze and, and not do anything about it? Are you the mm -hmm. person that would just walk away from it and give up? Or are you the one that's going to continue to persevere and, and fight back and push through? It's And it's kind of interesting, too, because we're in a, a very, like, uh, big political situation where mm -hmm. people, you know, sometimes are... Uh, not being fair to certain groups of people mm -hmm. and if you're witnessing something what are you going to do are exactly. you just going to freeze or are you just going to sit there and let it happen or are you going to fight for someone and say you know what no you can't call them that or you can't do that to them especially if you have the power to do so that's right if you have the voice the voice mm -hmm. is really important um were you 19 when this happened so did you just come to la and this happened yeah i was uh I was 20 at this time. Okay, so about time. a year yeah. in or so. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was within my year in LA. Jeez. Yeah. What when, a welcome, huh? What, I mean, that is <laughs> that is crazy. But we we forget because LA and I'll tell you, I've lived in I lived in New York City, and you always think like things happen in the crazy city, but LA feels more suburban, and we sometimes forget that we do live in a big city. Yeah. Yeah. And with with a big city, there's little pockets of anything and, and from everywhere, and you, at the end of the day, no matter where you are in the world, there's always there's always bad areas and good areas and mm -hmm. and everything's timing you know you just be at the right place at the right time or at the wrong place at the wrong time that's right and you know what bad things happen in good neighborhoods too yes, i was like i exactly. got a whole story about that but that's another show for <laughs> another day because how long was your recovery for this because you, you you still have the bullet <coughs> lodged in your shoulder i do i do it's still Jeez. there um i was on a sling for three months okay and the, my range of movement is literally just a little, like a little under an inch to the front and to the side and to the back. I was like this for three months and I couldn't really move much. Wow. Um, and then when I was, when my, my wound finally healed, I uh, jumped into a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I, did, I did some work on it and um, did everything. They, they would work on my shoulder, stretch it, find my range of motion again. I was in the pool um, with those floating foams that looked like a dumbbell. Yes. Just like working on my arm just, and it hurt. And just when that thing flows and you're trying to stop it and you, your shoulder would just went I'm through. I'm cringing like thinking about it, yes. Yeah, so we worked our way to like me lifting my arm up on my own, activating certain muscles, um, and then the water in, in the pool, and then into like slowly lightweight. You're like Rocky. You're like Rocky coming back. <laughs> I love this for the big fight. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. And then actually after that, um, once I recovered, um, the first dance thing that I did was the first time I auditioned for Sadie Ingen Dance. That was season five, five if I'm correct. Okay, yes. so it was five. So right after recovering from that, I told myself, okay, I'm going to audition. audition. How did that go for you, that very first one? Because that's, you know, you're like, it's just about stepping out there and putting yourself out there again, because I'm sure you're in your head, you're like, can I do this? Right. I mean, when I was, uh, when I was about, when I was around eighth grade, I remember watching um, season one for the first time. Nick Lazzarini. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was actually, um, it was his solo that he just popped up on my TV and I was like, wow, what, what's this? This is kind of cool. And I remember telling myself, one day, how cool would it be if I'm on that show? <sighs> this was like in Guam still. Like I, I wasn't even eighth grade. I, would, I didn't even finish high school or anything like that. Like I still try to um, find out what I'm going to do. Right? right. So I, I, I saw, I saw it and I came to LA and I saw the audition um, and I was like, Hey, why not? Mm -hmm. So I went, I auditioned for the show, um, long day, uh, this is a long, hard day. Um, I hadn't been in LA long enough to audition, I didn't have a lot of experience yet at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I made it through the choreography round. I, I, I've never got, done, an audi uh, done a solo and went straight through. Always choreography round. Even in season 8, they sent you to yes, choreography, didn't they? every single time, every yeah. single time. I. I'm not a very good like soloist. I, I've, so you think you dance before? So you think you dance? I've only, I've only ever done one solo in my entire life. Oh my gosh! And here and are all these kids. That, yeah, and here are all these kids that go what into competition, and that's what and they do every weekend. To, that's what they do. Yeah. And to me, I'm always I. It's always been with a partner. Partnering is my favorite. Ever since I was a kid, um, it's partnering and group dancing, but never a solo. Like I'm just one time, and I'm just that's just not uh, what I am. So I did a solo. I know it sucked, <laughs> but I'm like, put me to choreography. I didn't ask for that, but um, luckily, you know, they put me to, to choreography and I know that's where I thrive because I've always been able to pick up choreography 
fairly quickly and retain it um, and execute it. I've always been a visual copycat. You know? I'm a visual learner too. And yeah. I'll tell you, that is the name to the game yeah. in So You Think You Can Dance too. It's yeah. really important because sometimes people come on, if they have trouble picking up choreography, it's hard to make it through mm -hmm. even just Academy Week or Vegas Week, depending mm -hmm. on what season mm -hmm. it was. Um, so you get through to choreography. Did you get a ticket? Yeah, so I went through choreography, got a ticket, um, and then went to Vegas. Uh, at that time, it was the Vegas week, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing that we do? Solos. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and that is when they cut me. You're like, bye. Bye. Season they five. They send you on a plane, like right then and there too, yeah, don't they? Yeah, I did my solo, and I knew, and it was not good, and I wasn't prepared, and... Um, Went home after the first day, first round. See ya. Forty-five minutes later, you're back in LA. <laughs> For real, I know. <laughs> so, um, and then I decided to, and then they had season six, and that was the year that they did two seasons in one year, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and they were like, "Oh, come audition for season six. I'm like, "That's in a month." from now <laughs> isn't that weird yeah. to think about now when they because they don't do two seasons a year now, but yeah. that was a weird one. So I didn't do it just because I. Like I said, uh, So You Think You Can Dance season five was like the first big audition I've ever really been to. Um, and I told myself like, wow, I just, I went through this entire experience and I, it was nothing I've ever experienced and nothing I have ever expected because I had nothing to compare it to. Um, I learned so much, so much to a point that there was no way that I could have come back right away for season six to and, there's not enough time to process everything that I've learned and I've just gone through. Right. So I gave myself the year to train to just um, and just reflect on what did I do wrong, what could have done better, and I trained. What, so were you doing everything? Were you like jumping into a ballroom class, jumping into? Yeah, I mean, I like every uh, professional dancer out there. Classes like Edge, Millennium, Debbie Reynolds. Uh, back then, it was those. Those were the three main ones. Mm -hmm. um, and I would be there from like. 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Um, and Edge Scholarship Program, they have a they have an Edge scholarship, they have the scholarship program as you're probably aware. Um, a lot of students would think that I was a scholarship student because I'm always there taking the same classes as the scholarship kids. Um, but no, I was paying for it. Well, <laughs> where are you getting all your money? It's hard. It's expensive to live in LA too. Yeah, it is, it Were is. you working too? Yeah, or? I got um uh, when I when I got out to LA, um, my uncle was a gynecologist and he owned a clinic, um, and they needed uh someone to just run the front desk or do the bookkeeping bookkeeping oh, that's great. In the back. So I I got in there and I got a job. Um, far it was far. Uh, I used to live in Canoga Park mm -hmm. at the time, and then I would take a three hour bus ride all the way down to like Sawtell Pico area. Oh my gosh, it's because you didn't have a car. You didn't have a car. So I would take a three hour bus ride. Oh um, these are on days that I'm working when I'm not like- Training. Training. And... Three hour bus ride to get there. I would take a two hour bus ride to Edge, catch like an 8.30 class, and then take another three hour bus ride all the way back to Canoga Park, hoping that I would, I would make my last um, bus. Because I have to remember like, the last bus would cut off like around midnight or 12.30. Mm -hmm. And if I miss it, because it's LA traffic, you never really know if you're gonna make it. If I miss it, I walk the rest of the three to four miles. And then I That's wake amazing. up at six o'clock, do it all over again. When you talk to like younger dancers, you go, I used to walk three to four <laughs> miles, not in the snow, but in no. LA, yeah. uh, after getting dance class and after working all day. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's when you know you're hungry for it. You yeah. just you're gonna know put in the work. Gonna... you do. And I think, I sometimes worry a little bit. I know that a lot of these kids are very hard workers, but um, I think sometimes people get too focused in on the social media numbers and mm -hmm. how many followers mm -hmm. instead of like getting into the class and doing the work and then having the success yes. because um, it's not just about the pretty social media like arabesque photo. It's mm -hmm. not, I, even though they're gorgeous. I love dance photography, but yeah. at and, the end and of the day. Social media is a great platform for, for, for anything nowadays. You know, um, I'm gonna be honest, I suck at social media. <laughs> I am not good at it. I I don't know. I just I try, but I. I My husband's the same way. Bill is always literally like, I'm like, he's like, I should post this, and then he thinks about it, and then he walks away and gets like, you know, a glass <laughs> of water, and then sits on the couch, and then he just does. It's not it's second nature to him. It's not. It's yeah. not. I just didn't grow up in that. Um, and 
yeah, I'm, I, I'd rather do other things, you know? <laughs> I'd rather take a class. I don't know. I need to be better at it. I'm, just, I'm not, this is not, this is not uh, saying anything bad about social media or, or, or for people that like to be on it. It has nothing to do, to do with that. I personally am saying I suck. <laughs> do you, did you feel the pressure um, in season 13 and 14 when you're an all-star? Did you feel the pressure? Like, I've got to post. We got to make sure people are putting yeah. ourselves out there. Yeah. Yes, of course. I mean, every season after, um, I think my season was the first time that they added Twitter. D8 Marco. I know. It's so cute. That now. handle is so interesting because it's D8. So people keep thinking Date Marco. I'm just like, Date Marco. I never I even like, thought no, about that. That's so cute. No, it's not that. <laughs> uh, so that's the first time they, ha they had um, social media on the show, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they started adding other like Facebook and Instagram and all that. So as when I whenever I would come back as an all-star, we we had to do all those things. Um, again, it's part of the it's part of the job, it's part, part of the part of the gig, yeah, for the sure. Gig. Um, you came back and you did audition for season seven, correct? I did. So after not, so I came back season seven. Um, went to auditions again, did my solo, went to choreography round again. Um, I loved it because I always feel like that was my chance to to always prove to them that I, I'm better and better and better. Because mm -hmm. to me, solos are great. But at the end of the day, you're doing your, you're doing your own craft, right? Like you're doing something that like you, you know how to do. Um, choreography, I believe it's like, like you said, that the, the show is about picking up choreography and partnering and do all, doing all of that. And so I always believe that me going to choreography is actually a plus side for me. It's always a good thing. Like, I want to go to choreography because I can show you what I can really do. You're like, I'm going to nail this. Yeah. And I think it, it's, you're uh, in that sense, I think you're gaining the judge's trust. that you They can trust you with a partner. They can trust you to learn choreography, to put on a show when, you know, they need, as opposed to just a solo. Solos are great. A lot of people are great soloists, not me. So that's my thing. So I went, I did that, got through. Every time I go to choreography round, I always dance with um, at least three girls at a time, because usually there's more girls to audition than boys, and so they would like. Welcome oh. to the dance world. I know, I know. <laughs> so they would always need more boys to come back and like, oh, after I go dance, oh, come Marco back, come Marco back, so I would dance again. Come Marco back, come Marco. Oh my gosh! But and you're in front of the judges again, again, and again. again. But they won't give me my result until the last one. <laughs> you're like, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. So. I made it to Vegas again, this time made it further, and I kept telling myself, as long as I make it further than the, the, bef the one before. Um, this time around, I got cut on Contemporary. <gasps> Who was the choreographer, do you remember? Travis. Travis yeah. Wall, how dare he? Travis, oh, I, had, I mean, no, it has nothing to do with him. No, I know. It has nothing but, to do with him. And, and you know what? It's kind of poetic justice when you I made know. it to season eight and like you and, you and Melanie right off the bat. I like, know, I know. Travis Wall piece. <laughs> so I got cut on Contemporary, um, and, then, and then they were like, you know, just maybe not the season for you so, totally fine i learned a lot i made it further than the last time i got another year to train if i can make it if i made it further this much in the year that i train i'm certain that if i do the same thing i can put exponentially grow again you yeah know? um came back season eight um you know we do i want to ask you auditioned in atlanta correct i did what made you audition in atlanta versus la so um when the la auditions came around i was not available for it. Okay. Um, I had uh, another job to do. Um, and at this point, I'd been in LA for two years now, auditioning, got an agent, and practiced auditioning and got used to auditioning mm -hmm. and was fortunate enough of starting to work here and there. I started working a little bit more so I gained experience with in the working environment. Um, uh, so I wasn't around for the LA audition. So I was like, you know what? Atlanta is my last, the last city. Yeah. So I got a ticket and I went by myself again, as always. Um, got a little like little motel room and walked <laughs> around the whole city by myself and not in an area that's not very safe. Did but not get shot though. Nope, been there, done that. <laughs> yep, that's <laughs> off the checklist. Yep. So um, did my, did the audition and it was great. And it's funny because that's where I met Melanie for the first time. That's where she auditioned because she's from uh, Marietta, Georgia. Yes. Um, so we, we kind of, yeah, we met, we met, but like, I don't really know anybody, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I went to Atlanta by myself, the more I didn't know anybody. Um, 
and you never really know you're like looking around at the audition i wonder who's gonna make it in the show you never really know who are the people you're gonna make connections with in terms of like personal connection you know mm -hmm. um so went to Atlanta. um went to choreography around again solo still sucked and <laughs> but my choreography but my choreography good, yeah. good and i made it on the show and then made it all the way when you finally get that phone call third time. yes third time's the charm mm -hmm. i mean but this has happened to a lot of people yeah. they've auditioned many many times some people get on the first time but some people have auditioned four times yeah. and they finally get it's just it's one your time it's, it's your one time. your time exactly, exactly. Yeah. um when you get paired up with Melanie, I mean, this really was magic. It really was for mm -hmm. the two of you. You guys had great chemistry. Um, there are 8,000 like video collages on YouTube of that kiss with the nappy tabs oh routine. Oh my gosh. You know that, right? Have you seen them all? I, I don't know if I've seen, I haven't seen them all for sure. Um, but I know there's a lot of videos out there. Yeah, it, it makes me laugh because I'm like, her boyfriend at the time was in the audience yes. watching. It just happened to be the week he came to visit. Yes. And then of course the show plays up like the whole kiss in the routine I that know. Nappy Tabs did. And that was actually the first, I, I, I think I, I think that first, that week that we did that routine was the first time that I met him. It's like, hey, my name's Marco. I kiss your girlfriend on national television. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great routine to I got you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, I mean, Melanie's amazing, amazing, amazing dancer. And I miss her dearly. And she lives in New York. She's killing it out there. She's just too busy being a Broadway star. I, I, I love her. I mean, I would love to have her back here. But we also like seeing the success as well. So. Of course, of course. Um, So, yeah, we... we Got on the show together. Um, it's so funny. We I remember one time before the live show started, before rehearsal started, before we even um, knew our partners. Uh, they put us up in an apartment that uh, was very close to the uh, walking distance of the Grove, mm -hmm. right? Um, so she and I decided to just walk, and we we're like, "Oh, how cool would it be if all of a sudden we're partners?" And our first routine is "Contemporary" by Travis. We, well, you guys put it out there in the universe. Yeah, and it, that's exactly what happened. We're, and that's why when we got that, when when we, I don't know if you look back in the videos, and then and, and and she when she turned back and it was me. We looked at each other because like, like we called we, it. We were just out there on like La Brea yeah. and like yeah. How about that? Because you know your your first like duet together, Turn to Stone, is still one of those that people talk about. Did you know in the moment that you were creating something magical in rehearsals on? dress rehearsal, performance, anything? No, you never really know those things, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, how could you, right? Um, the thing that all you, the best you could do is do the best you could do and do something that may hopefully the audience or the judges haven't seen before and just do what you gotta do best and hopefully people like it. But were you feeling, because you can't create chemistry. It's To me, it's either there or mm -hmm. it's not. I mean, obviously you guys had it. You must have at least felt like a great partnership or you're like the synergy between us it's definitely working yeah i mean we felt it um but it's not something that we were like oh my god we're good partners we have chemistry yeah no. we're amazing <laughs> yeah we don't we, you don't you, we don't we didn't it wasn't like that it to, to us we we got along we were we got along as people um we became friends we started already becoming friends even before we were partners um and when we were in a the studio there's the photo i love this oh photo oh my gosh Look at that. It's That's an amazing photo. No more. I know. I would have that framed on my wall if I were you. Oh, she calls me Kimmy K. Kimmy K. Kimmy K. <laughs> um, Kim is my first like real name. Oh, really? Yes, and so she my, calls you Kimmy K. She calls me Kimmy K. I call her Mel Moore. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we were in a studio and we would just do it. And I guess we realized that we communicate really well. But we also don't see what other partners are going through all yeah. we know is what we're going through so to us we just wanted to get the work done and we wanted to do the best that we can for each other and for ourselves and every time she needed something i asked if she needed anything and she she, she she would do the same thing for me and and i guess that's chemistry right that's definitely chemistry and it's a partnership and it's teamwork yeah, exactly. and um you've you've worked under the top 20 format and mm -hmm. you've also worked under the all-star format we've had the last two seasons do you have a preference because I will say that long time viewers really do prefer the top 20. Hmm. They because they felt like when they get, you guys get partnered up together, they get to know everyone right. and then you break off with the All-Stars. I think that's the one thing I can say about the top 20 um format is that I feel like people do get to a chance to get to know people more because of it. Um but then again, there's another argument of saying like if it's like top 10, 
it's more focused on mm -hmm. people. So maybe you get to know them a little bit more. So, but there's two different arguments. Um, I personally don't have a preference. Um, you enjoy working. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Dancing. Yeah. yeah. And I think Marco knows the top 20-ish, and he won't tell me, so I'm just letting everyone know. What top 20-ish? Top 20-ish for season 15, what that format is. He's like, I don't know exactly. What? <laughs> I, I, he was tormenting me before the show. I was like, <laughs> have you no, know. I have no idea. They don't tell us anything. You must know a full slip or something. I don't know. You I know, it's, it is funny. It is funny because um, that is the one element of season 15 that they're like really like keeping the lid shut on that. Other things like, you know, I was asking Nigel about choreography round because they didn't have it at the auditions this year. It's moving into Academy Week. Oh. Oh, look it. I'm teaching you something. Wait, yes. he literally said 20-ish? 20, 20 they are saying both Nigel and um, Jeff Thacker, who I interviewed last week as well. It's mm -hmm. top 20-ish. It's not a solid top 20. So I was. that's why I was throwing out all these theories, because Jeff did say to me, we are going to see the All-Stars before the live shows hit. Really? So, yes. Am I teaching things that you didn't know? <laughs> I was like, so you might be at Academy Week in about a month. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I swear, I don't, I don't know. He's like, wait a minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to check my schedule. I know, check exactly. My email. I know. <laughs> I know. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's coming up in about, about a month's time or so. Yeah, but well, uh, I'll be, uh, hopefully they ask for me back this season. And we'll see that, yeah. I'd love to be back. Yeah. I, I want to ask you one thing since you're an all star. Do you think any of the top 13 kids, uh, top Season 13 to oh, you know, kids. Like, Wait, I know. You're like top 13 wait, who? What? 20-ish? 13? Sweet. I'm so confused. The kids, like when we did The Next Generation, do you think any of them could come back as all-stars? Like Kita's like a little bit older, Tate's a little bit older now? Um, I mean, depends on the concept, right? I guess. But uh, I was thinking some of them maybe. I thought it was kind of interesting. I was like, they're almost at a point. Right. If there's an 18-year-old contestant, they're almost the same Tate, age. How old is Tate now? Tate's like 15, I think, or 14. Mm. It, it's, still, it's still in that young mm -hmm. young age, you know, compared to like if you let's say they're partner up with someone who's twenty five and then and then fifteen, sixteen year old, like it's uh, it we definitely did it on the show, obviously. But um I don't know. I think they could come back if the concept is there, if the idea is there, why not? Right. I just I thought it was someone threw it at me on Twitter and I was like, you know, that's kind of interesting because they're, they're a lot of them aren't 12 and 13 anymore. I'm, right. They're pushing into the later yeah, teens. And they're but getting taller. Shaden is like Tate, getting taller. Shaden. Yes. Kita. I've seen Kita all over the place. He's working nonstop. He's like, I'm in China. And I'm, I'm like, I'm he's no, amazing. Oh, gosh. Um, lucky kids. You, when you came into uh, season 13, you were replacing Joshua, who had some personal issues to deal with. Uh, what was that like? Because you didn't go through that process of selecting mm -hmm. it. Um, and I do love that Shaden is out there on every single commercial and every m music video. He's killing it. Yeah, um, so proud. What was it like for you stepping into that? Because it's, I'm sure it's a little confusing. I was and terrified. For, and for Shaden too, you want to reassure this little one that like, mm -hmm. it's going to be fine. Yeah. I love you. Like, I'm excited to be here. I remember, um, so when I got to call um, that they, were, they wanted me to be an all-star, um, first thing I thought of was, not necessarily shading, but the kid, whoever who, who I'm dancing with, um, I instantly felt so scared because, so we, our Jeff uh, had scheduled like a, a little meeting with 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 me and and Shaden and his his parents, like he was his dad, um, just to meet us, for, for us to meet each other for the first time, you know. My gosh, I was so scared. He's, I, he's a sweet kid too. I love the kid, but man, I I just. I went into the office and not knowing what to do, and the and the, th the thought that kept coming to my head was like, "What if he doesn't like me? <gasps> like, what if?" I, it wasn't even about like the dance stuff. It felt I felt like I was meeting my kid for the first time. Oh my gosh! Like, if I had a son, like meeting my kid for the first time, like, what if he doesn't like me? That's all. That's all. Because if he doesn't like me, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and we have to dance together. Yeah, right? we have yeah. to dance together, and I want to be. I don't want to be the person to hold him back. You know, I want to be there to to progress him. I mean, I'm to mentor him. But if he doesn't like me, how are we gonna do that? <laughs> and then when I met him, oh, when I met him, oh my gosh! You're like, take a breath. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, I I we we connected right away. He kind of looked like me when I was that age. I I have a picture of me, um, when that when I was that age, just doing like a peace sign, and I I showed it to him. And he held it, and I have a picture of him holding my picture when I was his age together. So cute. And l looks very similar. And um, 
yeah, we connected really well. Um, great kid to this day. We're very close. We still we communicate all the time. Um, he was last Christmas, not this past one, but the one before that. Mm -hmm. His family spent um, Christmas with me. Fourth of July, I had a barbecue. Come over. He helped me move to my new apartment. <laughs> he was carrying boxes and everything. Oh, yeah, I, what a trying nice to get kid. Him, trying to get him to work yeah, out. Yeah, get some well, his get, little man muscles yeah, going. Yeah, get some meat on those bones. Oh, I love it. That's really incredible. And I think um, you know, for viewers, it, it was harder. But I think what people don't see what was happening behind the scenes, and it really was a great summer. And I was you know backstage with you guys, and the parents were great. I, I don't know if you can select. Speaking of Shane's dad. Amazing. The best. Shaden would not, Shaden's mom and dad, he, they, he, the kid would not be doing what he's doing now. The kid would not be the way he is if his mom and his dad weren't such wonderful people. And that's it. I think that's what people didn't see what was happening behind the scenes. All these great parents supporting. There was no drama yeah. at all. Any, any of the 10 kids. And I think that that was, it helped everybody really sort yeah. of rally around. And they're all out there. Tahani Anderson, I just saw like a video drop with I think Megan Trainer. she's mm -hmm. in it today. Like, I, you know, I see Shaden, I feel like in every commercial, yeah. Pete is out there, Tate's out there. I yeah. mean, they're, <clears throat> JT, forget it. JT is like his little superstar too. And it's, it's amazing how well mm -hmm. that these kids, like they had this showcase mm -hmm. and then they just went out there and into the world. I mean, parenting, I guess, right? Good parenting, and good training. Good training and just good kids, like good people. And they're they're great, honestly. They were and she didn't, whenever, the first time that I met him in that office, every time we talked about his mom and dad, he would cry. I love that. The, throughout the entire season, every time we talked about his parents, he would cry. It was one of those things, too, that it just the support, I think, and, you know, it, you're in a big situation and they helped him get there. I think yeah. for them that was so important. Mm -hmm. um, when you get the opportunity to come back for season 14 and, and really select your contestant, that was all new to you, which is kind of interesting, even though you're like, I've done this, but I haven't done the full part of it. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole different experience. That's a whole different ball game. And it's a lot of pressure because our decision can potentially change someone's life, mm -hmm. you know, and our yes or no will dictate what would they will do in the show and how and what we do with them in the show will dictate how well they do in the show and even after the show you know so it's a lot of responsibility um but like anything else you can't look at it so micro-sized like that you just gotta you know look at the bigger picture and be like you know just do your best support do what you've always done every single season yep. it's an all-star you go there you do your best you support them you help them in any way that you can um be there when they need you um, even if they don't want you, still let them know that you're still there and then hope for the best, right? And well, that's exactly just what It wound up really well for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was interesting too. Um, the, I remember the very first week of the live shows and you know, I, I, you know, I had some familiarity with a few people had tipped me off and they were like, go and look at like Taylor's video. So I knew who Taylor was. I knew who Lex was. I knew who um, Kiki was. Um, so there were, you know, there were certain people that I had already known about and was able to sort of study their dance and what they've been doing. Um, so when I get there the first week, you know, with Coco, when we were on the press line that week, I looked at the two of you went in the middle of the interview. I remember thinking this too. And I was like, this is something. Obviously, you nailed it out there on the stage, but I always get a different vibe because mm -hmm. I see you guys relax. The show's over. You know, everyone's got adrenaline going, but you kind of see who's really vibing and you see where you're like, okay, they're going to have to work a little bit on the chemistry and the partnership. Right. And I remember in my head, like in the middle of like microphone back and forth going, pay attention, like to myself, like something's going to happen. Like this is a really oh, nice. good partnership. And I, I remember saying to you at one point, I don't know if it was week one or week two, but I'm like, Marco, this is this is awesome. Right. I yeah. mean, like a, the same thing that I said when, when Melanie and I first started dancing together, you don't know those things when it's happening. Right. You don't necessarily know right away. You just got to roll with what it is. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with, with, with Coco or with Courtney. Like, we didn't really know it was like that, you know? Um, sure, I think what one of the things that helped was when we, the last round of Academy Week, when we got, when we got to choreograph for our top um, two choices, mm -hmm. and then we 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 picked we made our, our decision based off of that you know who can we connect with who we dance so I had a glimpse of it, but still in the moment you're just like you don't you don't know how you it plays out yeah you just kind of do your best and hopefully people like it that's all 
Yeah, well, it was, you know, I think season 14, I, I've always said this. I'm like, there's certain seasons I remember in my head, and season 14 will be one because the amount of mm -hmm. talent, whether they came, was, yeah. whether they were voted off first or, you know, they came in first, it didn't matter to me. Everyone deserved to be there and brought the level of dance yeah. and technique and performance. Like season 15, you got a lot to live up to. Yeah, I mean, season 14 was a great season. Um, like you said, the, the caliber of dancing was way up there and such hardworking dancers, all of them. And season 15, let's let's go. I know, bring it. I know, I'm dying to know. I'm like, who's going to be on the show? We've got a academy hasn't even happened. And I'm like, I'm just dying to know. Yeah. But there, there's something about the show. I love being there backstage. I love covering the show. There's something about this, this purity of dance that everyone just loves, and it's why everybody comes back all the time. Or even if they're not an all-star, they come and watch, or they mm -hmm. assist a choreographer, or mm -hmm. something like that. And, and I love that. Yeah, we we different um, alumni from different seasons always show up. Like you said, like assist, assisting other choreographers, or um, we bring them in whenever we have we have a guest. We we bring certain people in, and it's a family. At the end of the day, it's a family. Um, literally a soy dance family, and we we hang out. J there and outside of so you think you dance mm -hmm. and um like robert and i see each other every day we go to the gym at 10 o'clock every day <laughs> you and robert go to the gym every yeah. day at 10 yeah see now that's a social media like i would be at the gym on instagram story going look who's with me no i'll be like yo go do the set <laughs> <laughs> i love that i didn't know that yeah. see i'm getting to know you marco because i was literally like i don't no Marco at all. Because I suck at social media. No, it's okay. <laughs> I was like, but I feel like I know a little bit more about Robert. Robert's private too, but I yeah. was like, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna try to be better. I want to see at 10 a.m. Like you guys, both of you, like. What, what's you know? Well, I'll put it in our story, or he will. <laughs> all right. Tag all right. me on it. <laughs> I am. I'm gonna be sitting tomorrow. there tomorrow. I'm gonna be like on my phone, like waiting 9:59 and 10. Okay. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, we'll do one tomorrow. Might be a little later than 10, like 10:30. Me. I'll tag, <laughs> tag you guys me. for sure. That's amazing. You know, what are your goals? Because, uh, you know, I, I know you from So You Think You Can Dance, but y you've gone out there, you've, you've done Teen Beach Movie, you've done Grease Live, you did the Oscars with that beautiful Andrew Winghart um, yeah. piece mm -hmm. uh, with, oh God, Ali E. I love her mm -hmm. so much. And she's killing it in Rise. If you guys are not watching Rise on NBC, you're missing out. Yeah, she's a superstar. She's a she's superstar. A yeah. God. What, what, is your, what is your big goal? Do you want to choreograph? Where, where are you at? Continue so, dancing? I'm um, currently in film school. Mm -hmm. um for film directing yeah this is we were talking about this before i love this yeah so that's that's like um the next thing for me that's what i'm working towards that's my goal um i love movies movies have always been a part of my life i'm sure like a lot of everybody else mm -hmm. um but in 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 some weird way i feel like movies have always been like my parents in a, in a sense you know i have my mom and my dad and and uh, but i've always been so independent you know and um, I'm very close to my dad now, uh, but, I, but I didn't grow up with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my mom was a single mom, um, and he raised me, my brother, and my sister. Um, but I feel like I learned a lot of things from movies. I love that. Like, I learned how to shave for the first time through a movie. What, is there a particular movie that taught you? No, just watching different guys shave in movies. I'd be like Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, le I learned, like, like idea of loss or love or hardship triumph like i remember watching coach carter and like feeling like very inspired whenever i watch the movie i always feel like i could be that every single time oh, especially when i watch um sports films i would go out and pick up a basketball pick up a football and i, I love playing sports so it always gives me this motivation that i could do something See, you are Rocky. I knew it. <laughs> you are Rocky. Because, you know, a lot of the sports films have those, like, the underdog. And here they are. They have to fight their way I actually back. did a project on Rocky in, in, uh, I knew it, it. in, in school. I'm intuitive this way. Um, do you have, an, like, in your head, do you want to stick to a specific genre? Because obviously you like sports yeah. films. Suspense or, thriller. Suspense thriller. Yeah, and action. That's like have you seen A Quiet Place yet? No, but John I Christen's heard it's yes. really it's all good. good. It's so good. Um, I, that's really interesting. I want someone also to remake the dance film. So mm. if you are up for tackling that. Absolutely. Because it's always the same West Side Story. And I right. feel like there's another there's another genre in there. Don't worry. I'll oh, get there. All right. uh, how, how many, how much more, how many more semesters do you have going on? Um, well, since my, my schedule is like all over the place. Crazy. You know, so um, 
and I just got back into the country and just trying to figure it all out. Um, I've been in school for over two years now, mm -hmm. uh, but I still have about a, a year and a half left. Okay. But um, it's not always consistent. So that year and a half, like, I've been in school for two years, <laughs> but but it's like extra extended you'll get your degree yeah. you get, as just, long as you just keep going keep going yeah. at it there's no timeline making it fit um I'm, yeah I actually i was talking to uh my advisor yesterday just trying to figure out a schedule so and then so you think in dance if if, if they call me back Fingers that's crossed. another thing to um to consider um actually like in the when season gabby season season 12 season 12 um i was like in, in between rehearsals i'm like studying and then go to rehearsal and then performing and then inside studying or and then it, same thing for season 13 and season 14 i had to put school on hold because we did the whole mentorship with we were there for the entire season that's right um so i didn't really have any time so i had to put it on hold and then i went on tour with them that's right so i had to put all that on hold so now th then i left the country for another job and then now i'm back so i'm getting back into the, to school again but We'll it's see. okay. It's yeah. okay. So it's all, you know, you know, you'll get your that get degree. You, you've got the end game in sight. So I like yes. that. I like that. Marco, believe it or not, we're like at the end of the show. See, what? I told you it was going to go by fast. What? I know. I know. I was like, it's kind of crazy. And, uh, you know, I had like 18 other topics with you too, because I was like, I've got this and that. You and I had texted. We were like yes. talking about show business and yeah. like the show and the business. I feel like I want to do a whole panel on that because well, I'm like, want to have me back. I'd love to come I back. I would love to have yeah. you back. And I also promised people that I would reveal who the winner is. Oh. Do you know what they're going to get? They're going to get an autographed headshot of Artem, who was in season one. Do you yeah. remember him? Wow. Yes. yes, I do. From, he's now on Dancing with the Stars, of course. An autograph photo of Alan. Oh, by the way, Dance 10 Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I a would. program that features Gleb and Britt Stewart mm -hmm. and Artem and Alan. Oh, I'm the in there too. Would, yeah. Yeah. Whole program from Pro Dance Camp. Awesome. So I picked the winner. It was done by random. So here we go. Jordan Troutman, you're the winner. Nice. Jordan Troutman, if you're watching this, you can DM me your email address. Otherwise, I will DM you if you're not watching this right now because I'm going to have to send it to you. Congratulations. So exciting. I know. I know. Really fun. Well, I, thank you so much for coming in. I know you and I were going back and forth. You're out of the country, and then you're I like, know. I'm back. I appreciate that. I know. Thanks for having me. I'm glad it finally worked out. Um, and if you want to have me back let's tackle the next 18 questions next 18 topics topics <laughs> i got Whoa. i have a lot of topics in my head there's a lot going on and i just feel like i, I always like to tackle some of the dance topics because this industry is growing fast and quickly yeah. sometimes great and things evolving, evolving and yeah. um you know with, with growth comes some growing pains and that's why i always say there's show and there's business but you got to figure out a way to do it yes. together so. yes you're awesome. Where can everyone find you on social media? Because tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I'm going to sit there and there better be a <coughs> shout out. <laughs> so my Instagram is Mar um, Marco underscore Germar. That's M-A-R-K-O underscore G-E-R-M-A-R. Yes. Um, and then D8 Marco. Uh, D8 Marco. M-E-R-K-O on Twitter. Um, yeah. So. I love it. Go find him there. You guys, next week, choreographer Gigi Torres is coming Ooh. in. I know. We've got a lot of good guests in April. I'm so excited. And, of course, for all the latest dance news and a lot of So You Think You Can Dance scoop up from the auditions, all the judges, Jeff Thacker, you name it, you'll find it at dancenetwork.tv. Thank you so much to Popcorn Talk. We'll see you all next week. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Spita, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed here are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.